Alright guys, welcome back to another video. We are in an Iranian Tomcat here today and many of you may not be familiar with the story of the Iranian Tomcat where they strapped on the AIM-23 Hawk surface-to-air missile onto the pylons of the F-14 and made it an air-to-air -air missile. Uh, this was done in the later stages of the war, primarily 1986 onward when uh, they were running out of Phoenix missiles to shoot at the Iraqis. And uh, well, it's kind of crazy, kind of innovative, and from stories that I've heard, they actually did get a kill on a Super Entendard with this thing. Uh, one of the five that was leased to Iraq from France was shot down supposedly by one of these AIM-23 air-to-air Hawk missiles strapped onto an F-14. Uh, now what I want to do is shoot down the exact same aircraft here using the exact same missile. The kill supposedly it happened about 20 miles was the separation right here we're about 31.4 ish miles and we're gonna go master arm on and we're gonna see if we can even hit anything with this thing we'll go stt lock he's locked target 26 miles thank you jester 26 miles uh fox one i guess this would be a fox one i think yeah fox one fox one for sure So that thing came off the rail and actually looks like it's tracking. So, kind of interesting here. Got this guy on the TV. 15-ish miles, look at him defending now. <laughs> Very aggressively. <laughs> and look at that hawk. It's tracking. Oh my Target, god. Target, 13 miles. 13 miles. I'm going to get behind the cloud cover, or get underneath the cloud cover here, and I'm going to give him another one. We still have them locked. Switching to PSTT. Okay, Fox one again. Dude, I'm surprised by the maneuverability on this thing. Check this out. Look at that thing's really tracking. Target, four miles. Oh, it hit Flash. him. <laughs> it actually hit him. <laughs> I lost lock. Yeah, you lost lock because he hit the side of a mountain here, dude. <laughs> oh my god. Look at that. No time to eject either. Wow, that's pretty cool. That's actually kind of cool. I enjoyed that. So I just want to try a long distance test. I want to see how far we can toss one of these Hawk missiles and uh, have it actually hit a target. We'll have a look in tack view after this as well. I think it'll be super interesting. I was pleasantly su surprised by the maneuverability on this missile, but I guess it makes sense, right? Like Hawk SAMs are maneuverable fairly. Uh, so that makes sense. We have a Bandit Ba 280, 73 miles, 35,000. Okay, 70-ish miles, 35,000. That's pretty good. And the other thing is the range from these Hawks, I think it'd be pretty good because they don't have to fight through the, the high density of the air down low from the surface. Uh, you've got them up here at like 30,000 feet. You fire one of these things. The Hawk missile might actually have a range comparable to a Phoenix. I don't know. It's kind of what I want to find out here. And just because it has that range doesn't necessarily mean it can hit a target at that range, but it's interesting. 
You got it, boss. Okay, we'll put this guy into an He's STT. Locked. Target, 61 miles. Okay, 61 miles. That would be the maximum of where I would feel comfortable shooting a Phoenix from, probably. Right there, Fox One. And there she goes. And correctly, we can see the missile doesn't loft itself. That's, you know, correct. You wouldn't be seeing that. It's not designed to be an air-to-air -air missile at the end of the day. Uh, unlike the Phoenix missile, missile, which would come off the rail and go straight up to 80,000 feet. Um, the Hawk missile is not doing that. Target, 50 miles. 50 miles. And we're reducing altitude so that my radar can look up at him against the clear blue sky makes it much easier to track that target. Oh, I'm showing nails 11 o'clock. Okay, we're gonna track that. I do expect him to start defending here momentarily. Give him another Fox 1 here. Fox 1. Target. 38 miles. Yeah, that was about 40 miles on that last hawk. There's that MiG now defending very aggressively. You see him doing a near vertical dive down to the ground here. A desperate attempt to survive. We still have him locked. If I lose the lock, the missiles are trashed. So we're going to have to absolutely maintain the lock here. first one probably target 32 miles the first missiles probably scrapped he's now 32 miles look at him he's trying to get down into the mountains Lost luck. Probably got hit. Probably lost luck because he's dead. <laughs> Alright, let's go have a look and tag you. Alright guys, let's do a quick look at the tack view for that last round. Uh, the last one's actually kind of interesting because you can get a uh, an understanding for range uh, from like maximum range down to like effective range like if the bandit defends uh, we have our first launch all the way over here at about 57 miles i guess right there and there it goes uh hawk definitely an aim uh sorry a fox one because if you break lock that thing doesn't track anymore uh, so it doesn't have terminal guidance uh active radar like a phoenix missile for example a phoenix will go uh it'll go active pitbull uh, in terminal guidance, this will not. So, you know, which I guess makes sense why they have to put it on the Sparrow pylons. Not that that really matters, but I assume that's just due to the sheer size of these missiles that they had to be on the, the Sparrow pylons. But it makes logical sense, you know, because it just ends up being a Fox 1. <laughs> so kind of feels like you're just firing a long-range Sparrow. And so this thing actually gets fairly close to this MiG. Like... 11 or 12 miles before this thing starts defending here and you can see this missile still has plenty of energy 1.8 and it bites off on chaff here this guy goes to a vertical dive uh, again one of the intelligent designs that ED has added to the AI um, they understand the difference 
they understand how to defend better. And so this missile bites off on chaff, but you can see that if the bandit hadn't defended, this missile would have hit him at like Mach 1.5 ish, 1.3 maybe by the time it actually hit him up here, if he hadn't defended uh, an unsuspect, uh, unsuspecting bandit, if you will. Um, so that's interesting. 60 miles effective range of a, of a Hawk missile fired like that. Uh, we have our second missile, which I didn't even realize we fired already. Uh, this thing was fired at a range of about 22 miles, it looks like, 22 nautical miles. And this one actually hits the defending MiG. So we have a MiG that's in dense air and maneuvering. And this missile still hits him at about 22 miles, which is in line with what the Iranians said in the, the test. They said the Hawk missile that hit the Super Entendard, that was our first video, uh, or first round, I guess, uh, that in real life, it hit at about 20 miles. And we got this one at 22 miles. And if you watch this, it's super close. Watch this, it comes, like look at the mock speeds going down. This missile is almost dead. Uh, tracking very well, by the way, maneuverability of the Hawk missile is fantastic. And right here, it hits, and it hits behind him i think you guys saw that in the video you don't actually have an impact on the mig itself it looks like a phoenix missile very similarly it's hitting here and then the blast wave is what's killing the mig and then the mig just you know hits the ground um which is pretty cool so you don't even have to get you don't really have to hit him exactly <laughs> you just have to get close to him and look at this MiG, or this missile at Mach 0.62. So this missile is basically dead. This is true, like, max range tip of the, like, it can't do any more than that, you know? At 22 miles on a defending target down low. And there it is, hit. Splash 1 MiG-21. He hits the ground. And he's gone. Very, very interesting. Very interesting. Okay, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.